rising damp. It's a problem for millions of homes around the world. In this video, we'll show you how to deal with it using the dry zone system. The dry zone system, it's fast, clean and effective, enabling damp treatment and replastering to be carried out in just 24 hours. Compare this to traditional replastering methods, which can take up to six weeks before redecorating, and you'll find there's no contest. So let's see how it's done. Where the plasterwork needs to be replaced, the dry zone system provides a fast and effective method. First off, you need to prepare the wall. Hack off the contaminated plaster to about 30 centimeters above the height of the damp. Make sure you remove any loose material from the underlying masonry by brushing clean. Next, you need to drill holes along the mortar course. If you're using dry zone 310 milliliter cream, inject it directly into the drilled holes using a standard mastic gun. For treating large areas, there's a dry zone 600 milliliter cream available. The 600 milliliter foil cartridge requires a special injection gun. Apply two coats of dry base liquid applied DPM to the lower portion of the wall below the dry zone injection line. Once complete, the exposed masonry can be primed with dry shield. You only need one coat, but make sure it's applied evenly, covering the whole area to be treated. And don't forget to wear appropriate safety gear, such as gloves and safety glasses. Allow dry shield cream to sink in for around 30 minutes. When applied, it's a white cream, but turns clear as it sinks in. Once dry, the treated area is ready for replastering. Measure and cut the plasterboard sections. Number each section to show the sequencing and to ensure a perfect fit. You should leave a gap of about 12 millimeters between the board base and the floor. And make sure you cut and trim around any electrical sockets or light fittings. Dry grip adhesive can now be used to secure the plasterboard to the wall. Apply small dabs of dry grip, evenly spaced, to the reverse of the plasterboard. You should allow about one to two tubes of dry grip for a standard size sheet of plasterboard. Offer the board up to the wall and fit it into place. Make sure there's sufficient contact with the adhesive, but allow an air gap to remain. The recommended air gap between the board and wall is about 10 millimeters. This will allow for some adjustment and help prevent the board from coming into direct contact with the wall. Remember, it's advisable to leave a 12 millimeter gap between the floor and board. Use plastic wedges designed for this purpose and they'll help in achieving a perfect fit. The dry zone system positioning plugs will hold the boards in place and ensure an even flat surface across all boards. Drill about four to six holes at the corners and mid sections of the boards, then tap in the positioning plugs with a hammer. Dry grip adhesive should set after one and a half hours at normal temperatures, but check by gently pressing the board before final plastering. For larger areas, scrim tape can now be applied to the board joins, followed by a skim coat of plaster. The walls are now ready to redecorate as you wish. So there you have it, 
a finished, damp-free kitchen thanks to the dry zone system. Contact Safeguard to find your nearest dry zone system contractor. The dry zone system. It's fast, clean and effective.